Good evening, Namaste. I once again welcome you all to our Friday session, Friday 6 p.m. session, wherein we read the Mahatma letters. Today we are going to discuss and listen to Brother Krishna, who is the speaker of the day, about the letter number 30, that is chronological order 74. So there could be parts of it part one, part two kind, but let us start it today. Uh, before we start the session, let us get into silence and universal invocation first. O oh, hidden life, vibrant in every atom. O oh, hidden light, shining in every creature. O oh, hidden love, Embracing all in oneness, may each who feels himself as one with thee know he is also one with every other. Silence. Come back. So today, as I said, our speaker is Brother N. C. Krishna. Let me briefly introduce him. Brother Krishna joined the Theosophical Society when he was just 16 years old. And from a young Theosophist, he has grown up to be a national lecturer of the TS Indian section. He is a member of the executive committee of the Indian section TS. By profession, he is a chartered accountant. He is now in Hyderabad. He, he would like to introduce uh, himself as a theosophist who got inspired by his maternal grandfather, who was an exemplary theosophist of that, that time. So he leads a life which is based on theosophical principles very, very sincerely. People who know him, people who closely have interacted with him would know his knowledge of theosophic literature, values, beliefs, whatever we name it. He just do not believe, he lives. He lives a theosophic life. That is Brother N. C. Krishna. So over to you, sir, for today's topic. You may introduce the topic and carry on. Thank you. Yeah. Over to you, sir. Yes. <clears throat> Dear brothers, we're going to consider a portion of letter number 30 as per Barker edition. So while going through the letters 113 and 127 previous week, we talked about a letter written by Master KH2 Master Master KH to Mr. Evo Hume. The letter was transmitted actually to Mr. Sinet for him to go through and find if suitable to be delivered to Mr. Hume. Ultimately, it is said that Master M advised that the letter need not be delivered. And so the original we say we, we find in the British Museum, the original letter number 30 is there in the British Museum, undelivered because uh, Master M advised it should not be delivered. Right, that's the care masters take as to what information should reach and how it should reach, how they should be worded, things like that, you know. So the original letter has been referred to by the persons who have written the reader's guide to the master's letter of the wisdom, letters of the wisdom, and they have given some study notes. And referring to that, we are told this long letter number 30 
is uh, consisting of 13 white sheets of paper, roughly uh, of A4 size because it is eight and a half and 11 inches, roughly looks like an A4 size. So the letter was written in blue ink, says the study notes. And what, I, what we understand is the letters were precipitated on that paper in blue ink using heavy script. So this is the basic information we have on the letter. And the quote of the, or the extract of Ava Hume's letter, which we talked about in the earlier letter number 127, was appearing as a facimile, facimile in AOH's handwriting. The, that passage was underlined with blue pencil. Facimile is something like exact copy. We have perhaps Xerox now, and perhaps when someone is not in station, and with the approval of that person, the signature is appended to a circular which he issues. That's perhaps Fasimil to say briefly. So this letter was written in the month of August of the year 1882. AOH, that is Hume and Sinet, both were in similar at that point of time. The letter gives the details of the difficulties the Arabs had, the masters had, these two masters had, with the letter written by Evo Hume to Master KH. In fact, though the letter is addressed to Master KH, even Maha Chohan was able to go through with that. And once the letter is made, uh, I think uh, once the letter is written, all the people who can read, can read, meaning the private thoughts of a person, even if he's sitting in the corner of the room somewhere and thinks something, masters can understand that, discern that. So this is something of a letter which uh, AOH wrote to Mr. Uh, Master KH. And so that letter was there with all the Arabs. And so they had certain difficulties uh, which they thought they should address. And perhaps uh, Master KH was authorized to write a reply. So the letter de dealt a lot with Mr. Fern, who was the secretary to Mr. Ava Hume, an Englishman born in India, as we have been told last time. So Mr. Fern, who was secretary, secretary to Mr. Hume. So that person, he was a bit of a clairvoyant and perhaps somebody who was interested in occur subjects and things like that. But <clears throat> the whole letter which Hume wrote was something to do with how Fern was treated by the masters was actually, uh, he was trying to say things about Master M as to how he treated him. And Master K H says, actually all these are clear misrepresentation of facts and contents. So this is what we understand. The whole letter actually, major, major portion of the letter deals with Mr. Fern. So Master M actually wanted to train Mr. Fern and use his services for transmitting letters, messages, information, etc. And it is said, Mr. Master M put him on probation, but uh, Mr. Fern did not pass the test of probation. So that's another information which we have considered even in the past. Hume was charging or accusing Master M as to how he treated Mr. Fern. So we have learned that Mr. Fern was imagining a lot of things. Though he was a clairvoyant, perhaps he was stretching his imagination. Maybe he was also clouded by hallucinations. So he was giving a lot of information to humans in it. One such statement which uh, Mr. Fern made was that masters, KH and M especially, do not know or do not have the power to read the minds of others and were actually pretending as if they have the power of reading the minds. This is the information given by Mr. Fern to these two individuals, Hume and Senate. Master KH says, Ava Hume and APS received letters from the masters and viewed them with, sus these two people viewed them with suspicion, lack of faith and dissatisfaction that they were not receiving letters 
directly. Both of them, it was human AP Senate, especially Senate. Uh, he always felt that the letter should come to him directly. And so he had that dissatisfaction. They had all, all the time looked at these letters with suspicion, lack of faith, etc. This is what Master KH, KH has to say about these two persons. Mr. Hume says the contents of the letters were not based on truth. They were not truth at all. Master KH says the time has come when he, that is Master KH, would talk frankly few facts to Mr. Hume. So that letter, it sounded very tough if you go through the letter. Master KH says, lying is the refuge of the weak. Master KH says, lying, ability to say a lie, is the refuge of the weak. Master says, we, adepts or masters, are sufficiently strong. We don't dread the truth or are afraid of facing the truth. Master says firmly, we don't lie. You, meaning Evo Hume, have learned our shortcomings, mainly the false observations of Mr. Fern, through the false observations of Mr. Fern. Yet the master says, we are not so weak to lie. We are not weak at all to lie. We don't have to lie at all. We are strong, so there is no need to lie, says the master. We don't want to appear wise to. We don't want to appear wise to. We actually are not aware of or ignorant of some facts or matters. When we don't know them, we don't act as if we know them. We will show the facts and don't have to lie to appear wise. So if you don't know certain facts, we'll say we don't know those facts. We don't have to appear that we know those facts. That's what Master K. H. says to Mr. Hume. Then the Master K. H. lays one condition. If we have to work together, that is, Senate, Hume, and the Masters had worked together. Of course, this letter is only going to Hume, but the letter is read by Mr. Senate, we should understand. So we shall have to start on a firm footing or a ba base ourselves on a perfect understanding. Master says, AOH means Hume, believes that we Masters actually get credit or recognition for what we do not know. This is the feeling Hume has, that the masters actually get credit or recognition for what they do not know. Master says, as there is a mystery that surrounds and shrouds our existence, you, meaning you have a Hume, cannot know or realize as to what we are. Master is avoiding the word spirit while describing about themselves as that word spirit has many other connotations. So he says, because there is a mystery surrounding or enshrouding their existence, Hume is not able to understand, realize what masters are. So this is one statement he made. Master tells Mr. Hume, I can opine on you and say what you are. If I say it, you may laugh it off for outward appearance, but will bear grudge in the heart. So this is something which happens to all of us. Master tells Hume, I can opine on you and say what you are. If I say it, you may laugh it off outward for outward appearance, but will bear grudge in the heart. So I'm, I'm adding this. Can we take objective criticism? We don't brook criticism to enable us to correct ourselves we should be ready to receive objective criticism or even if the criticism is not so objective at the drop of the hat i can criticize others but i will not take criticism of others if that is directed against me so this is something which i have added because how they view how the master view, how Ava Hume thought about them and what master thought about Hume. Master asks, Master KH asks Hume to prove that we are wrong. Not just by denying, not just by denying. If you suppose deny that you are wrong, simply using a word is not enough. 
but show weight here evidence to show that we are wrong and that dis that disbelief should be justified so he says just by saying no we you are wrong is not enough but there should be weight here evidence to show that we are wrong then i will accept that we are wrong so that disbelief should be justified says master k h if we are not agreeing on these basic ground rules says master k h there is no point in wasting our time in controversies and correspondence if we are not agreeing on these basic ground rules there is no point in wasting our time in controversies or correspondence says master k h to hume then basically it's a question of faith one has one has to have faith or suffer from the lack of it mistrust on the existence of the masters cannot take us anywhere master says to mr hume till such time hume is able to discern the truth at least wants to find out the truth there is no point to agree to continue this correspondence because if you don't have that intention there is no point in continuing this correspondence that's what master says master says to hume again until we prove our existence not astrally because that is not something which he wants which hume wants master says to hume until we prove our existence not astrally but physically to either of you you will continue to refer to us as imposters or still was lying spooks this is the these are the words of master kh so master kh says to mr hume that we cannot convince you that at least occasionally occasionally we have the ability to read the minds you are not giving or you are not giving that ability to us but we know enough english says master to understand your plain and simple letter after going through your letter my dear brother says master you have mistaken us from the first to the last completely it is shocking to say the least the way you have understood us says master k h your letter addressed to me is based on misconceptions and there are missing links which are necessary to understand the whole situation in the right perspective says the master true key to understanding lies in those missing links says master k h master k h is asking mr hume what do you mean by the following sentences because he wrote the sentences and the sentences are copied avh that is hume is charging that kh is spoiling mr fern mr hume says fern is a good fellow with an intense desire for occult knowledge mr fern is subjugating his self through self mortification that is subjugating the desires etc and following self discipline this is what hume says about mr fern avh feels mr fern would be useful to masters this is the recommendation of mr hume to masters mr hume says that due, that due to the indulgence of masters mr fern has become self conceited one who has become full of pride and is a fabricator of fiction the other side of mr fern also mr hume is saying and mr hume says mr fern has humbugged or deceived master m this is what mr hume is talking to about fern to mr mr about mr fern to master m and master kh replying to the above charges master kh says personally that is master kh himself would not like to waste his time or attention on mr fern this is the quick uh, way in which he disposed of the application master kh says everyone who wants to be a chela a disciple has to undergo a period of probation without an option nolens volens is the phrase used there without an option in the same breath master kh says he that is mr kh master kh 
never took or considered Senate or Hume both as chelas. Master K. H. says, at any point of time, he never considered Mr. Sinet or Mr. Hume as chelas because they have the typical traits of Europeans or Westerners, pride, etc., etc. Master K. H. says, Madam Blavatsky from Madras had warned Mr. Fern and frightened him off saying what it means to be a chela. Chela is warned beforehand of temptations, deceptions through appearances, etc. One may feel that he has seen the master. It could be somebody else taking the shape or looking like master appearing before one. So he says, master says, Chela is warned beforehand of temptations, deceptions through appearances. Chela has to choose one path out of the two paths which appear before him. One path, the first path, short one, which is easy to tread and reach the goal or destination. The other path, the second path, which is arduous and tough, longish path, full of obstacles, stones and thorns, is the expression given in the letter. These obstacles will make the chela stumble more than once on the way to destination, says the master. The chela is at liberty to see and decide and become eligible, become fit, become more deserving to become a master or an adept. Chela is put through various ordeals and by perseverance and grit alone, Chelo, Chela has to walk on the path and should become worthy and successful. Chela would resist all and every temptations. Chela would resist all and every temptation, reject illumines. Illumines could be anything. It could be power. It could be position, anything. And tread the path of truth and honesty, even at the cost of his life, or much more seriously, even at the cost of the boon of attaining future adeptship. So not only at the cost of his life, but sometimes he has to put the whole thing which he has earned till that time to earn the adeptship. Chela will be a trier to the core and not a deceiver, not a humbugger, not a deceiver. So the word try which is spelled elsewhere by the master. T-R-Y, try, in capitals is meant elsewhere. So this is something which master is talking about. Then master K-H comments on how the masters were called Jesuits by Hume. Jesuits are those belonging to a society of Jesus and Jesuits, Jesuits as an organization, the society is an offshoot of Roman Catholic order of priests and brothers, J-E-S-U-I-T-S, -E Jesuits. Hume used this expression of Jesuits in the past, which is found in the letter number 99 of the Barker edition. Master K.H. explains, the training we give or we receive externally when compared is similar to that what Jesuits also give, also go through. Master K.H. says, we teach the truth, only the truth, whereas Jesuits teach everything other than truth. Jesuits know what they teach is a lie, but go on doing it for selfish reasons. See, he's trying to compare both because he called them Jesuits. So he's saying what Jesuits are and what the masters are. He's trying to explain both the roles. The masters speak only the truth, truth and only the truth, whereas Jesuits compromise with truth and they know it is a lie, but still operate with the lie. Because they have the selfish reasons to achieve. Master K. H. says, Jesuits work to achieve power and glory for their order, for their order of Catholic order. Master K.H. says, Jesuits work to achieve power and glory for their order. But we adepts 
work for the power and glory of humanity in general. So there is a difference, vast difference. The Jesuits work for their order, the closed order, whereas the masters work for the entire humanity in general. Jesuits work for achieving power in this life. Jesuits work for achieving power in this life. We, masters, toil, work for all lives to come. And chelas sometimes get disappointed or deceived temporarily. But if the chelas stick to the discipline, a lot of people drop themselves out of it. But chelas get disappointed or deceived temporarily. But if the chelas stick to the discipline, they will never get deceived. They will not be subjected to falsification or deception, untruth, not just for this life, but for all lives to come. But Chelas will be encouraged to be on the path of truth for all lives to come. This is what Master K says. So this is the advantage of going through the path, the second path, the path which is full of perhaps stones and thorns, but then worth going ahead with it. The disciples with discipline will always be a disciple. The disciple with discipline will always be a disciple and a willing learner for life, for lives to come. The Jesuits care for the physical, evanescent, temporary, fading existence. This is what Master says. The Jesuits care for the physical, evanescent, temporary, fading existence. This method of Jes Jesuits causes misery to the entire humanity. Like cancer cells affects the healthy cells in a body, says Master K.H. Master K.H. says, the much misunderstood Western brothers don't understand this. We train inspired men to sacrifice the personality, which is temporary, like a passing flash. We adepts train, influence men to sacrifice the personality, which is temporary like a passing flash. We, that is adepts, work for the welfare of the whole humanity and help the man to realize the most important immortality. Immortality, humanity, which is a part, has to evolve to become a part of the whole. We test and bring out the best in man. This is what Master Kate says about training. Jesuits work for themselves. They remove the unwanted nature in man like scavengers. This is the expression used by Master KH, mind you, to achieve their personal selfish ends. Jesuits work for themselves. They remove the unwanted nature in man maybe confessions or whatever you can call, like scavengers to achieve their personal selfish ends. We, masters, employ the dukpas who are in our command and our control and give them complete freedom to draw out, eliminate completely the inner dark nature of chela. Dukpas are people actually who practice black magic, but then Master says there are certain dukpas who are helpful to them. They are under their control and they employ them to see that these darker side of the chelas are removed using their services. Chelas are tested and given opportunity to get rid of the unwanted part of their dark nature, which normally chelas are not aware of. The darker nature of one's nature, the chelas are not normally aware of. Such a nature exists in them, is not known to them. It is concealed in some dark corners, sticking to their nature. Maybe we can understand there's vasanas which are coming from previous lives. Chela is tested. Success or failure, the result depends on the chela himself, the sadhana which he would do himself. So, Success or failure, the result depends on the Chela's efforts and Chela himself. The Guru only can show the way. The Eastern ideas, Master says about motives and truthfulness, 
differ when compared with the Westerners' way of understanding the same concepts. The Eastern ideas, ideas of people who are living in the Eastern hemisphere about motives and truthfulness differ when compared with the Westerners' way of understanding the same concepts. The Westerners conceal the truth, says the master, and are not those who will tell the truth on the face of a person, and they conceal the truth in the garb of politeness and affability. This is what he says, affability. Master says, we from the East say straight on one's face as to what we think of that person is in our heart. We speak the truth, only truth, says Master KH. In expressing the truth, Master says, there's no ill will held against that person. We say the truth all right. We say the truth about a person on one's face all right. But then we don't have an ill will which we carry against that person. Truth is conveyed succinctly and kindly, truthful at kind. This is perhaps the way in which the masters work. Master KH talks about what Master M had expressed about Hume. Evo Hume found it peculiar. Evo Hume found it peculiar because there is something which. He wants to take a, an opinion about Master M. So he says this. It was very peculiar that he behaved this way, says Mr. Hume. Master KH says, Master M does express truth with least or no hesitation. This is what everybody does, all the masters do. Master KH says about Master M, he does express, that is, Master M expresses truth with least or no hesitation. But expressing truth like this, you, meaning AOH, have called Master M as imperious. He behaves like an emperor, very haughty. This is what Master M was told or M was opined by Mr. Hume. Behaving like an emperor is what Mr. Hume felt. Evo Hume also said, Master M is angry when opposed. Mr. Hume also said, Master M is angry when he's opposed. Master KH says, knowing him very well, knowing Master M very well, as I am nearer to his elbow, says the letter, Master M is imperious all right and gets angry. Gets angry, yes, especially when he is opposed, when Master M is opposed, when and what he that is what Master M believes or knows is right. So he says, Master KH says, Master M is known to him quite well, and Master M is imperious all right, and gets angry, especially when he, that is Master M, is opposed to when and what he believes to be true, or what, knows he, what he knows, what Master M knows is right. Though Hume says he bears no malice towards Master M, this is a on the face of it, though Evo Hume says he bears no malice towards Master M, Master KH says it is evident that you bear malice and ill will. That is evident in the entire letter which I have written about Master M and the impression which Mr. Fern gave about us. Master KH says if Master M has concealed his anger, Master M has this proposition. Master KH says, if Master M has concealed his anger, chose not to speak the truth, will you, meaning Evo Hume, think of him as a better person, put him on a higher pedestal? This is what Master KH is asking Mr. Hume. If Master M has concealed his anger, chose not to speak the truth, will you, that is Mr. Hume, think of him as a better person, or put him in a higher pedestal? Master KH says, just as it is good to eschew and eradicate anger with its roots. Just as it is good to eschew or eradicate anger with its roots. We, the masters, consider more sinful 
the show of slightest outburst of emotion or passion. The most simple is this. Okay. We have to definitely eschew anger, eradicate anger from its roots, but we consider it more sinful to show the slightest outburst of emotion or passion. It's a greater sin to pretend that the anger is eradicated completely from one. It is a greater sin to pretend that the anger is eradicated completely from one. So this is something which he has talked about in the first six pages of the letter of number 30. And uh, of course, there are many other smaller details which I have not considered because maybe if we have mentioned all that will be just reading the letter. But then if we had to opine or if we have to study these carefully, the letters which are given, in fact, we have messages. We normally think these messages are meant for Mr. Hume. We normally think these messages or these statements of advice are meant for Hume. But if we read carefully and apply to ourselves, but there's anything which we need to correct ourselves. I think we'll have a lot of work to do. So this letter number 30, which is a very important letter on chelaship and discipleship and the misunderstandings which were created by Mr. Fern on masters, thinking that he knows, he, he knows them quite well. He went on telling Mr. Sinet, Mr. Hume as to what they are. In fact, to the extent of saying, they do not know how to read the minds. This is something very ordinary people can do. The master can do anything and more than this. But this is what Mr. Fern had advised Mr. Sinet and Mr. Hume. So this is, in a way, a summary of the first six pages. And we'll have to perhaps take two more classes because I thought I can complete it in two classes, but then when I went through the letter, I've gone through this letter long back, but now again going through this letter carefully, I find it is quite a lengthy, very, very meaningful and very purposeful letter, which needs more time to understand and contemplate. So we need to contemplate on a lot of things which is said about truthfulness, about the discipline, about the ability to go on the path even though there are obstacles. So there are a lot of things which we need to underline and keep it in our memory and keep it in our consciousness so that we become better for that. So I now hand over the mic to Madam Suvarlina. Yes, sir. Brother Krishna, you are you are on you are on mute. Why it was on? Yes, I've completed the portion yes. which I chose for today, and yeah. uh, yes, I, I I was told some time back that it should take about forty minutes. In my watch, I've taken forty minutes. Yeah. Good. So I would request uh, Brother Sanat Kumar Vyas to do the translation in Hindi, please. सब सभी को नमस्कार महात्मा लेटर्स 74 क्रोनोलॉजी क्रोनोलॉजिकल ऑर्डर का आई एम ऑडिबल यस यू आर या यह पत्र 74 है जो अगस्त 1882 में लिखा गया था इस इस पत्र के महत्वपूर्ण मत महत्वपूर्ण यही है कि चेलापद और उसके आकांक्षाएं रखने वालों वालों के लिए महात्माओं का दृष्टिकोण स्पष्ट करने वाला यह पत्र है युम ने मास्टर केएच को फर्म के बारे में लिखा था यह पत्र एक 
प्रेप जाल से संबंधित था जिसे युंग ने सोचा कि वह मास्टर एम के लिए तैयार किया गया है और युंग को लगता है कि मास्टर का मास्टर एम का इस जाल में मास्टर एम इस फर्म जानना चाहते थे कि क्या मौर्य चाहते थे कि वह लेख प्रकाशित हो और मौर्य उस जाल में आकर जवाब देते हैं कि ऐसा चाहते हैं फर्म के इस दृष्टांत में तीन रहस्यमय लेख थे सर्वशक्तिमान गुरु और फादर और आखिर में मास्टर मौर्य इसे हास्यास्पद कहकर हम इसके बारे में और बात नहीं करेंगे ऐसा कहते हैं पत्र के प्रमुख बिंदु इस प्रकार से हैं। यदि आपकी इच्छा है कि हमें एक साथ कार्य करना चाहिए तो हमें पूर्ण समझदारी के आधार पर ऐसा करना चाहिए जब तक आप इस तरह के वादे से नहीं बंधते हैं तब तक हम में से किसी को भी विवादों और पत्राचारों में अपना समय व्यर्थ नहीं करना चाहिए आपका पूरा पत्र गलत फहमी के आधार पर है उसके बीच की कड़ियों को ना समझी उसकी कड़ियों की ना समझी है केवल उसी से आपको पूरी स्थिति की सच्ची कुंजी मिलती है निम्नलिखित बातों से, से आपका क्या तात्पर्य है माय डियर मास्टर आप दोनों में से आप फर्म को पूरी तरह से बिगाड़ रहे हैं यह बहुत ही अफसोस पूर्ण है वह एक अच्छा इंसान है और उसे गुड़ विद्या में अत्यधिक रुचि है और इसमें दृढ़ इच्छा शक्ति और स्वमन की अद्भुत क्षमता है मुझे यकीन है कि वह आपके उद्देश्यों की पूर्ति के लिए उपयोगी होगा लेकिन उसका अहंकार असत्य होते जा रहा है और वह मनगणित बातों वाल का पक्का रचिता बन रहा है और यह सब आप सभी की देन है उसने मौर्य को पूरी तरह से झांसे में लाया है इस पर मास्टर कहते हैं यह मेरा यह मेरा मित्र बंधु था जिसने मिस्टर फर्म को झांसे में लाया था हमारे पास इस अभद्र शब्द का दूसरा अर्थ ही नहीं बल्कि अन्य नाम भी है और वह अन्य नाम है प्रोबेशन या परिवीक्षा काल प्रत्येक चेला जो केवल दिखावटी नहीं रहना चाहता है उसे कम या ज्यादा अवधि के लिए इससे गुजरना ही होता है चाहे वह राजी हो या न हो इसी कारण से यह निश्चित रूप से आप पश्चात जिसे पाखंड या धोखा कर रहे हैं कहेंगे उस प्रणाली पर आधारित है प्रोवेशन के तहत एक चेला को उसे जो पसंद है वह करने और सोचने दिया जाता है उसे पहले से ही चेतावनी दी जाती है और बताया जाता है जैसा कि आपको दिखावो द्वारा प्रलोभित किया जाएगा और बहकाया जाएगा आपके सामने दो रास्ते खुलेंगे दोनों उस लक्ष्य की ओर ले जाएंगे जिसे आप प्राप्त करने का प्रयास कर रहे हैं पहला तो आसान है और जो आपको प्राप्त होने वाले उद्देश्यों की पूर्ति के लिए अधिक तेजी से आपको ले जाएगा दूसरा पथ अत्यधिक कठिन अधिक लंबा है और वह पथ जो पत्थरों और कांटों से भरा है जिसमें आपके मार्ग में अनेक बार ठोकर लगेगी और शायद जिस जिसके अंश में आपको असफलता भी मिल सकती है और किसी विशिष्ट छोटे से कार्य करने के आदेश को पूरा करने में असमर्थ हो सकते हैं लेकिन जबकि दूसरे वाले मार्ग में जिन कठिनाइयों का आपने सामना किया था वह आखिरकार आपके श्रेय के पक्ष में लाया जाएगा और पहले वाला आसान मार्ग आपको आसान कार्य की पूर्ति के लिए केवल अधिक संतुष्टि प्रदान कर सकता है चेला को पूर्ण रूप से स्वतंत्रता है और अपने गुरु को जाल साज होने का संदर्भ पैदा करने के लिए अक्सर दिखावे के दृष्टिकोण से नजरिए से काफी न्यायोचित है इसके अलावा जितना ज्यादा 
जितना ज्यादा सामाजिक उसका आक्रोश होगा चाहे वह शब्दों में हो या उसके दिल में खोल रहा हो वह एक सिद्ध योगी बनने के लिए अधिक योग्य है वह अपने गुरु के कार्यों और आदेशों के बारे में सबसे अधिक अपमानजनक अपमानजनक शब्दों का और अतिर भाव का प्रयोग करने के लिए स्वतंत्र है और उसे जिम्मेदार नहीं ठहराया जाएगा बशर्ते वह तीव्र तीव्र प्राप्ति परीक्षा में विजयी हो बशर्ते वह प्रत्येक और प्रत्येक प्रलोभनों के मोह में न आए प्रत्येक मोहपाश को अस्वीकार करें और वह साबित करें कि उसे सच्चाई और ईमानदारी के मार्ग से कोई भी विचलित नहीं कर सकता या इसे एक धोखेबाज बनने के लिए मजबूर नहीं कर सकता नहीं उसके भावी महात्मा पद हेतु अनमोल वरदान का वादा जो उसे जाल से भी प्यारा है जान से भी प्यारा है वह उसे विचलित कर सकता है प्रिय महोदय चीजों के बारे में हमारे विचारों से और यहाँ तक कि शब्दों के महत्व के बारे में हम शायद ही कभी सहमत होंगे हमें जैसु जैसुट कहा था और जैसे कि चीजों के प्रति आपका नजरिया है उसे देखते हुए शायद आप हमारे बारे में कुछ हद तक सही थे क्योंकि जाहिर रूप से हमारे परीक्षण प्रशिक्षण की प्रणाली में ज्यादा अंतर नहीं है जैसा कि मैंने एक बार पहले कहा था वे जान, जानते हैं कि जो कुछ सिखाते हैं वह झूठ है और हम जानते हैं कि हम जो प्रदान करते हैं प्रदान प्रदान करते हैं वह सत्य है एक में सत्य और सत्य के अलावा कुछ भी नहीं है वे अपने संगठन के शक्तिशाली और गौरवशाली बनाने के लिए काम करते हैं हम सभी मानव जाति के लिए प्रत्येक इकाई के लिए मनुष्यों की शक्ति और गौरव के लिए और हम संतुष्ट हैं बल्कि हमें अपने बल्कि हमें संघ और उसके चिप्स के अलावा के अलावा कार्य करने छोड़ा जाता कार्य करने छोड़ा जाता है वे इस जीवन में लौकिक शक्ति के लिए काम करते हैं और मेहनत करते हैं और धोखा देते हैं हम अपने चेले चेला को कुछ समय के लिए धोखे में आने देते हैं ऐसे करने का तात्पर्य माने कि आने वाले ने कभी भी बहकावे में ना आए आने वाले कभी भी बहकावे में ना आए और उनके केवल इस जन्म में ही नहीं बल्कि उनके अगले जन्मों में में अवास्तविकता और असत्यता के सभी बुराइयों को पहचानने इसके लिए कार्य करने हैं परिश्रम लेते हैं और छल करते हैं जैसे जैसे अपने आंतरिक तत्व को जीवात्मा के आध्यात्मिक मस्तिष्क की बलि देते हैं देहात्मा से देहात्मा से मस्तिष्क को विकसित करने के लिए हम सिद्ध पुरुष जिनकी आलोचना की जाती है और गलत समझा जाता है हम मनुष्यों को दूसरी देहात्माओं के जो क्षण भंगुर है उसका बलिदान करवाना चाहते हैं संपूर्ण मानवता के कल्याण के लिए इस तरह उनके अपने जीवात्माओं के लिए कार्य करते हैं उन्हें धोखा देने के लिए मार्गदर्शन दिया जाता है हमें भ्रम में मुक्ति भ्रम से मुक्ति के लिए प्रशिक्षण किया जाता है स्वार्थ हेतु के लिए वे स्वयं कामगार का काम करते हैं हम चेला के संपूर्ण आंतरिक स्वभाव को बाहर निकालने के एक में उद्देश्य से जिसका ज्यादातर कोना कोना हमेशा के लिए सदा अंधकारमय और छुपा रहता है यदि इन दोनों में से प्रत्येक को बारी बारी से परखने का अवसर न दिया जाता तो अपने चारों ओर अपने चारों पर हमारी सेवा में कार्यरत उन्हें कुछ कार्य काल के लिए पूर्ण स्वतंत्रता देकर हम यह कार्य उन पर छोड़ देते हैं चेला चाहे पुरस्कार को जीते या हारे यह पूर्णतः उस पर निर्भर करता है 
फल प्राप्ति करे या हारे उसमें मास्टर युम से कहते हैं कई बातों में आपके आपकी सदबुद्धि को मैं स्पष्ट रूप से पहचानता हूं और उसकी प्रशंसा करता हूं पिछ, पिछले दो पिछले दो महीने के दौरान अलग अलग समय पर आपने बार बार अपने आप को एक चेला के रूप में पेशकश की है और एक चेला का सर सर्वप्रथम कर्तव्य यह है कि गुरु और गुरु जो कुछ भी कहे उसे बिना क्रोध या दुर्भावना के सुनना यदि आप सच में एक चेला बनना चाहते हैं अर्थात रहस्यों को ग्रहण करना चाहते हैं तो आपको स्वयं को हमारे तौर तरीकों के अनुकूल बनाना होगा न कि हमें अपने तरीकों को अप, न कि हमें अप, आपके तरीकों को अपनाना होगा जब तक आप ऐसा नहीं करते हैं तब तक सामान्यतः तो हम जितना दे सकते हैं उससे अधिक की अपेक्षा करना आपके लिए व्यर्थ है थैंक यू It is from my part. Thank you, Brother Vyas. I think uh, we had a wonderful uh, interpretation in Hindi as well. So I thank uh, both of you, like our main speaker, Brother N. Krishna, and you as a translator. I think uh, we will continue reading the Mahatma letters. So if you're available to do the translation in some other episodes, also you're most welcome. Okay. okay and uh, brother krishna i don't see you if you can just come on video i'll just spotlight because if there are people who want to discuss something want to raise some question then we'll quickly take up otherwise we will uh, close end the session yeah so anyone who would like to add something want to hello if you want to add something or you want to ask something No. Hello, I want to ask a little question. Please. If Sinet and Hume wish to receive their instructions, they must accept the master's condition and not attempt to impose their own. What uh, do we mean that condition of Mahatma? Mahatma's condition. Hello? Yes. If there is a misbelief and mistrust and uh, one starts perhaps accusing the other person, they should, there is no common ground on which they can meet. So master says there should be some basic ground rules and then perhaps yes, we can discuss. So that is what he says. There is no point in wasting time in correspondence and creating controversies. And the condition is that we should be on the same footing. Both, both of us should be able to understand each other quite well. So we should be on the same footing, same base. Then we can perhaps talk about what exactly one needs to discuss and understand. If you are in a different pedestal and I'm in a different position, we'll not be able to follow. That's the only condition he had kept. Master K.H. had said, we should be on the same firm footing based on perfect understanding. That's what he said. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brother Krishna, for yeah. your time, for all your explanations. I think uh, we had a good time studying this letter through your interpretation, through your explanations. And we would look forward to more such sessions by you. So with this, we would be concluding the Friday session of today. We will again meet on Sunday with another topic. And thanks all of you for joining us. So we will end up with the closing prayer. 
सर्वे भवन्तु सुखिना सर्वे सन्तु निरामया सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु मा कश्चि दुखभागवेत ओम शान्ति 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 Thank you all. We are closing the session.